Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are going to learn how to do single crochet and make your very first coaster. To make this cute little single crochet coaster, you will need your yarn. I'm using four weight worsted acrylic. I'll be using a six millimeter crochet hook. You'll want two stitch markers of some sort a pair of scissors, and a darning needle for sewing in your ends. So let's get started. So get your two stitch markers handy, your six millimeter crochet hook or whatever hook size you're using with your four weight yarn, and make a slip knot. So just lay that tail over your non-dominant hand, wrap it around two fingers, making a little bit of an X. Flip your hand over and poke that working yarn underneath the loop you put around your fingers. Give it a pull and shrink it down. And you want to make sure your working yarn is the yarn that is adjusting that loop size. So put that onto your hook, shrink it down, and chain 10. Nice and relaxed. Make sure you push that loop all the way up on the shaft of your hook to make sure it's the right size. And don't pull on your yarn after you've made that loop. Just let it hang out. If it's a little bit bigger, that's fine. We don't wanna be shrinking it down. We don't wanna be cheap on the yarn here. So just let that loop stay and make 10 chains, making sure they're big enough and not pulling on our yarn. We just wanna let our yarn be yarn. So chain 10. Move your hands up when you need to. So they're right underneath your working yarn and just keep going nice and relaxed. 10 chains. So there are my 10 chains. To count your chain, you don't count your knot and you don't count what's on your hook. You just count these loops. There's little V's. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 is right underneath the loop on your hook. So now we're going to chain one more. So that is a total of 11 chains. And now just put your thumb on the top of those pretty V's and turn your chain to the side like this. Now we're going to be looking for these back loops, these little camel bumps. There's one right underneath our working yarn. If you really get in on that, there is our first back loop is right underneath our working yarn, but it's kind of hiding. This is our second third, fourth, we're just going for these little Loch Ness bumps or these little camel bumps along the back. And we're gonna be putting our hook right in to the second back loop. So not right underneath the working yarn. We're gonna put our hook in right here. So take your hook and just push it in. You can even use your finger to kind of drag that back loop onto your hook and make one single crochet. So we're gonna grab our yarn. So from under, we're just gonna put our hook up and kind of turn our hook so that hook part grabs our yarn and bring it through that stitch or that back loop, just like that. Now push everything back up. We want to size all of our loops when we crochet, we want to size on the fat part of our hook. And now we're going to do it again. We're going to grab our yarn. So push your hook onto your working yarn, bring it up, turn, and now we're going to bring it through both loops that are on our hook, just like that. So that was a single crochet. Now just pull your hook up so make that loop a little bit bigger. Take your hook out, just kind of hold that out of the way. We want to look for this stitch that we just made. So not the big loop we just pulled up, but this little lasso that's around that yarn that we just pulled up right here. So we want to take our stitch marker and just pop it into that very first single crochet that we made. Just close it up so we can keep track of that very first stitch. So put your hook back into that loop, shrink it down, and now we are ready to keep going. So now slide your fingers down. We want to find that next back loop, which is waiting for us right here. So there's one, there's our second back loop, there's our third hiding down here. So we're just going for these back loops, making sure that our thumb stays on those V's. That's going to keep our chain nice and turned. So now again, put your hook into that next back loop. You can scoop it on with your finger. 
If it's hard to get that loop on, that means your chain is too tight, so you might want to go back and use a larger hook for your chain 10. So now we're going to go underneath that yarn, just tip your hook up a little bit and turn it as you bring it a little bit forward or a little bit horizontal and bring it through that first loop, that back loop. Push everything back up onto the fat part of your hook and now push your hook onto your working yarn, turning so that hooky bit is facing our bodies or facing horizontal and bring it through both loops. So that is another single crochet. And now into the next back loop, we're going to do the same. And we're going to do this into every back loop along our chain. So we're going to do 10 single crochets. So into the back loop, under the yarn, just using that hook to grab it and turning our hook, bring it through the back loop, move your fingers so it's underneath where you're working, push your hook back through. So we want all these loops to be the same size. And now grab your yarn, turn your hook, and bring it through both loops. Just like that. So into the next back loop, the next camel bump, just poke that back loop onto your hook. Underneath your working yarn, grabbing it, bringing it through, and pushing everything back up onto your hook. Onto your working yarn, Put your hook up and turn so that yarn is wrapped around and now slide your hook through both loops on your hook. And again, push your loop right back onto the fat part of your hook. So now we're going to keep doing that for each of these stitches going across. So this is what it looks like in slow motion. Keep working towards the end of that chain, one single crochet into each of those back loops. And now at the knot, right on top of the knot, that's the trickiest one to see because it's kind of tiny and it looks a bit different. But if you put your thumb back on those pretty V's and tip your work to the side, you'll see it sticks up a little bit right there. So we want to make sure we get into that very last back loop and it's right on top of that knot. We want to make sure we have 10. So poke it on with your finger and your last single crochet. So there's our 10 single crochets. So we want to do the same thing at the end of the row. So just pull up a bigger loop and take your hook out. Hold that loop out of the way. And we want to look for that last stitch we made. It's this lasso that's around the loop we're holding in our hand. So it's right here. And we want to go underneath both strands of that V. That is our actual stitch. So we want to put our stitch marker right into that stitch, right underneath both loops, and close it up just like that. And we want to make sure we have 10 stitches. So we marked the first stitch right here. So that is one. The next V, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 was where our last stitch marker is. So we have our 10 stitches. So now we're ready to keep going for row two. Put your hook back into that loop and shrink it down on the fat part of your hook and chain one. Always pushing it up onto the fat part. And now we're going to turn our work. So to turn your work, put your hand underneath your working yarn, grab your work, and bring it back. 
just like that. So now get yourself situated holding your work and our stitch marker is sitting in our very first stitch. That's where we want to go. You can take yours out if you can keep an eye on your stitch, but I'm just going to leave my stitch marker there so you can see it. So we're just going to push our hook straight in, grab our yarn and bring it back, wrap our yarn, and we're going to take off both loops. Just like that. And again, we're going to mark our stitch. That was our first single crochet of the row. So now we're going to move that stitch marker up onto that stitch that we just finished. Hook back into the loop, shrink it down on the fat part of your hook. And now we're going to be looking for these little dimples all along the side of our work. So here's one, that's our next stitch. Two, three, four, and all the way along. That's what we're going to be looking for. And if we go straight into that spot, we're going to have two strands of the next stitch on our hook. Both strands of that V on the top of our hook. So bring your yarn back through. Push everything up onto the fat part of your hook. Wrap your yarn. So grab it from under. Turn all the way. Bring your hook a little bit horizontal and slide it through those loops. Size that loop again on the fat part. Look for your next dimple, your, your next stitch right here. We're going to go in. That gives us two strands of that V on the top of our hook. So push your hook in. Your hook's underneath your yarn. Kind of tip it up so that yarn goes onto your hook. And now turn so your hook snags it. Bring it through. Push everything up to get it nice and big on the fat part of your hook. And now this is the same as chaining. So just push our hook down onto our working yarn. Bring it up turn. We want that pointy bit of our hook facing us and slide it through those two loops. And make sure you go back up to size your loop on the fat part of your hook. So now here is what it looks like in slow motion. I'm always pushing my loops up onto the fat part of my hook. I'm using my pointer finger to adjust or hold my yarn I'm, and I'm moving my fingers quite a bit to keep track of where I'm working and what I need to see. So I move my fingers back so I can see that next stitch and that next stitch is right here. So I move my fingers out of the way but I have my, my ring finger underneath my work so I'm going to be pushing right onto my ring finger. And then I move my ring finger down and I bring my thumb back underneath where I'm working because I want to be holding where that stitch is. Sizing my loops, wrapping my yarn and bringing through both. So I'm holding my work right where I am using my hook. And now to find the next stitch, I leave my ring finger behind but I slide it over a bit and I get my thumb out of the way so I can see that next stitch right here right there. So you can see how much work your non-dominant ha hand has to do. So now one more single crochet. Moving your fingers as you need to and pushing those loops up onto the fat part of your hook. Moving your fingers again into the next stitch. Bringing your yarn back. Sizing your loops. Wrapping your yarn and taking off two sizing your loop. So that's a really important pushing your loop up all the way and moving your fingers so that they're helping you. And now into the last stitch where we put our stitch marker. You can just pull that stitch marker to see that stitch. Pop your hook straight into the same spot that your stitch marker's in and do your last single crochet. Moving your fingers, moving your hook, just like that. So now move your last stitch marker up. We just want to go into this stitch here, 
that yarn that is lassoing our working yarn right here. So pop your stitch marker in. And we're ready to do our next row. So loop back on your hook, shrink it down on the fat part of your hook, hand under the working yarn, grab your work and bring it towards you. Get yourself situated. You can take that stitch marker out if you know where you're going to be putting in your next stitch, but I'll leave it in for you. So we're going to go right into that same stitch as our stitch marker and do our first single crochet. Making sure we make all of our loops nice and big on the fat part of our hook. Wrapping our yarn, turning our hook, and bringing it through. So that is our first single crochet of this row. So make a bigger loop, take your hook out, and move that stitch marker up. So I want to keep track of our first and last stitches. Eventually, moving our stitch markers will be kind of uh, more work than it's worth because you'll be able to see your stitches but when you're starting out and you don't know your first and last these stitch markers really help. So now you can just keep going doing single crochets back and forth 10 per row all the way along so into each little dimple each of these little dimples or stitches one single crochet so there's eight little dimples and two stitch markers. So eight dimples in the middle and one stitch marker on each end. So one single crochet into each stitch. Into that last stitch where our stitch marker is, put your hook in. You can take that stitch marker out so it's not in your way and make your last single crochet. So bring your yarn back Push all your loops up on your hook, grab your yarn, turn your hook facing towards you, and slide it through those loops. And now we want to make a big loop, take your hook out, and move that stitch marker up. So we want to look for that stitch that's going around our working yarn, and pop our stitch marker in, just under those two loops. So you can always count your stitches if you want to make sure you still have 10. So the first one is here with our stitch marker. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 with our first stitch marker right here. So now you can keep going, just repeating that over and over. I'll put a timestamp in the on the screen there and also in the description box. And just keep working along, repeating that very same row over and over. If you are working along without stitch markers, your very first stitch is right here, right after our chain one. So right there is our first stitch. Our last stitch is right here. It's on the, it has a little bit of a hill. That is our last stitch of the row. And now keep going until you have completed 12 rows. To count your rows with single crochet, I just kind of hold mine to the side. If you give it a bit of a pull, you can see the rows a little bit more easily. So our first row is here. We don't count our chain. That doesn't count for anything. So our first row is this little bit into our chain. So that is row one. Then there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So we have finished 12 rows and chain one. At the end of our work, we always wanna do a chain one. That's gonna turn into like a little knot to secure our work. And we wanna cut our tail, leaving a long enough tail to sew in with a needle. So four inches, pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. So now we can sew in our tails. If you have a blunt tip, you can use that. And now we're just gonna work in our tail. So just go back down into your work. I don't wanna work it back and forth right along like the corner or the edge. So I'm gonna go into that next row. Just push your needle through. And you don't wanna pull it too tight. So give it a little stretch after you brought it through just so it looks 
your tail has gone in, but it's still a nice corner. And now we're going to go back and forth along this row. Back and forth. We want to do it about three times. So I'll go through about three or four stitches in one direction. And again, bringing your yarn through, but then giving it a stretch. We don't want it to be tight. And then going back the other direction. So I'm going to make sure I'm not going exactly in the same spot. I'm going to pick a little bit over so I go back in a different path. And because I have a sharp tip needle, I only have to do this twice because it's going to be going through all of those fibers and really holding that tail in. If you have a blunt tip needle, you're going to want to go back in one more time in the opposite direction for a total of three times. And now we can just cut that tail. So you want to do the same with your other tail. And we're finished. So there is your very first single crochet coaster. It will want to curl up a little bit like that. That is what single crochet does. So just find whichever way it wants to curl and use it the other way. <laughs> it's kind of pop it down. So I hope you enjoyed this class as much as I did and I'm really looking forward to the rest of them. There is a link to the playlist for the classes in the description box down below as well as where to reach me on social media and all the rest of it. If you haven't joined or subscribed to this channel go ahead and hit those links in the description box down below. There's also links of where to find me on social media. I'd love to see how your coasters turned out. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next class. Stay hooked!